Hey, this is Ben from Pulsar2121 Games. In this video, we are going to gap spark plugs and talk about what gap is right for your application. All right, so before we put in the new spark plug, let's talk a little bit about spark plugs and how they relate to a high compression head. So, first off, you may have noticed me mention earlier that you do not want to remove the head gasket in this situation. However, some people do to try to get some more compression. So I have this illustrated here. This is a standard head. This is a high compression head. This illustrates the dome. And uh, as you can see, it's quite a bit shorter here. So some people that maybe don't want to spring for the 65 or $70 for the high compression head, they'll remove this head gasket which then lowers the head another millimeter or two and supposedly gives it a little more performance. Honestly, I'm not really a fan of that because whenever you remove a gasket, it's possible for the metal to fuse under extreme heat and pressure. So um, I don't think that's a good option, but that is an option if you're trying to gain compression. Also, if you have an angle fire head, you can install an NGK spark plug, which actually goes into the head a little bit further, which then therefore decreases the amount of space in the dome, which increases the compression ratio as well. However, you cannot do that on a high compression hemispherical style head because if you were to drop that spark plug any lower, the piston would run into it which would obviously damage your engine and lose plenty of power gains that you would have gotten. So there's kind of the theory of spark plugs and head gaskets and how the high compression head uh, works essentially. So moving over here, this is how the spark plug works. We have positive voltage coming in here and then through the engine ground we have negative voltage coming in there. Now positive and negative always try to find each other. They're always trying to hook up. <laughs> um, but the problem is if you have too wide of a spark plug gap under high compression situations or under rich fuel or any situation where it would be easier, electricity will say, hey, screw that. I'm going to go connect over here through a short in your wire to the spark plug or through the engine frame somewhere. It'll take the path of least resistance each time. So if you're running a high compression head, there's more pressure that's going to try to fight the spark between the electrode and the negative and positive. So positive comes through there, negative comes through here, they make a spark and that, that fires. So to get around this, if you install a high compression head, it's a good idea to also install a high performance CDI, uh, which stands for capacitor discharge ignition. The higher voltage and amperage you have, the less likely it is to get a bad spark, which then turns into incomplete combustion. So um, if you're kind of trying to increase performance on the cheap and you just want to do the NGK plug method and do the slant fire head, um, what you can do to still get decent spark and you don't want to buy the new expensive CDI, which isn't that expensive, um, what you can do here is shorten up the gap. So, Let's see here, get my eraser. So if you want to, uh, again, this is on the cheap. Um, you can do it like that. You can bend down the prong so it has less distance to travel for the spark, meaning less resistance. However, it, it will be more consistent of a spark, but it won't burn as much fuel because there's not as much spark to ignite it. So it's kind of a balancing act. Um, a general rule of thumb, if you have a good CDI, um, 
that's matched to your engine. So if you have a regular angle fire head and you have a regular spark plug and a regular CDI, or you also have a good CDI and a good head, you want to be in the range of 0 0.034 to 0 0.037. And that's 34 thousandths or 37 thousandths of an inch. That's the specification for this engine. Now, if you're running increased compression through a bigger NGK spark plug or increased compression through a high compression head and you do not have a good CDI, to get around that, you can lower the gap down to 0.019 to 0 0.0, uh, let's see, at 2.2. So this is the recommendation. If you have a weak spark for any reason compared to your compression ratio, or if you're running lights off of the same coil, which also isn't recommended, you would go with this option. Um, since I'm going to be installing a high-performance CDI, I'm going to gap in the 34 thousandths to 37 thousandths of an inch range. So that's kind of uh, a little explanation of how the spark plug works, what you can do to adjust it, um, and how to get your high compression. Um, so now we're going to move on to actually putting the spark plug in. All right, so here's our spark plug. Now, as you can see, um, here's our feeler gauge. Um, that's 0 0.035, so 35 thousandths, and it's not even close. So when they've gapped this, um, honestly, I don't think they uh, are very precise when they make these spark plugs. So they don't gap these very carefully. Now, you can always change the gap after you've installed um, your spark plug, run it a little bit. If it seems like it's four stroking on the top uh, then you might want to lower the gap down a little bit if it's too high it'll have trouble starting so basically the theory here or the process here is just to get underneath the electrode and then or get underneath the grounding strap piece and then pry it up like this now we're starting to get a little bit more of a gap for what's in spec for my application. Um, so then we're just gonna put in the 35 thousandths feeler gauge. Um, we're a little bit low, or a little bit high on that. So just gonna bend it down again, very carefully, very evenly. Now there is exactly 35 thousandths of an inch. And that is the correct specification for my application. Now again, I can always go back and adjust this um, if for some reason that doesn't work for my motor. Um, but uh, it's, it's really easy to, to adjust and it's always a good idea to adjust before you put in a new spark plug. So now we're just going to uh, put this in here. Want to make sure you don't cross thread, that's always important. So now we're just going to take the spark plug wrench uh, comes with the... Oh! Crap! Alright, now, in the interest of safety, gloves are going back on. Alright, now, we've reached the bottom. Now we're just going to seat the spark plug. It doesn't have to be super tight. Just using the thumb method again. Okay, and that's good. Then we'll just go back a half turn to uh, unlock the, uh, the wrench here. There. Okay. And there is our new spark plug and our new head. Thanks for watching our video today. Hopefully it was educational. 
make sure to click subscribe and also click the bell button so you get notified when the next video is uploaded. Next time we're going to be cutting a piston skirt to increase airflow. So uh, make sure to stay tuned. It's going to get awesome. See you later. This has been Ben for Pulsar 2121 Games.